Turkey. Even though it is one of the oldest air forces in the world, not many people know a lot about it. But one recent event has sparked the attention of many for just a brief moment. Earlier this year, the long-awaited Taycan has completed its maiden flight in Ankara, joining the US, Russia and China. So I wanted to find out how a country can go from this to the first ever domestically built fighter jet being a goddamn fifth generation aircraft. Well for that, I need to go all the way back to the Ottoman Aviation Squadrons. And it all began right here, 112 years ago, when two little tents were built for the aircraft school, marking the beginning of the Turkish Air Force in the January of 1912. Today it's called the Istanbul Aviation Museum and it houses some of the most important aircraft that shaped the way the Turkish Air Force is today. Subscribe. In the 1930s, the Turkish were looking for a reliable fighter aircraft to defend the skies against all threats around the borders. So their eyes were fixated on the French D510 fighter because it proved rather reliable during the interwar period. So in 1935, Turkey placed an order of 12 of those fighters to the French Air Force. But unfortunately enough, at the same year, France put an embargo on Turkey. So all the orders were scrapped. They had to improvise. So in 1936, just a year later, they chose this, the Polish PZL. P-24. Well, rather, it's an export variant of the Polish PZL-P-11, but this is the only sole surviving example of that export variant. The original engine was actually a British Bristol Mercury one, but the license forbid Poland to export any aircraft that used that engine for the foreign market. Having heard that, the French engine manufacturer Gnomron suggested to put the 14K Mistral engine on the aircraft, as you can see here, and they already added an enclosed cockpit, meaning that this aircraft could be exported to other nations, mainly to the south like Romania and of course Turkey. So technically, even though the French put an embargo on Turkey, Turkey's first actual fighter was a French modified fighter aircraft. This single engine change was so successful that this aircraft, well not this one in particular, but this aircraft model made the world record for the fastest radial powered engine fighter with 414 kilometers an hour at that time, giving it the name of Super P-24. It served in the Turkish Air Force from 1936 up until being retired in 1960. The F-4 Phantom has got to be the most recognizable jet of the entire Cold War, well aside of the MiG-21, but the Turkish the Turkish F-4E is considered one of the most respected aircraft that has ever flown their skies. This one is an F-4E and currently only four countries still operate the F-4, being Greece, Iran, South Korea and of course Turkey. Well, maybe by the time you're seeing this video, South Korea already retired the Phantoms, but anyway. It's known as Baba or Father in Turkish by the pilots, the ground crew and many aviation enthusiasts all around the world, since it just carries that much of a significance to the Turkish people. The US Air Force has donated around 120 F4Es to the Turkish Air Force, but unfortunately at that time, the Phantom was already outclassed by other aircraft that the US has produced and other air forces. So they were thinking about a new option to either build a new plane or improve their old plane. So they signed a contract with Israeli Aerospace Industries to make a new and improved upgrade to their Air Force, making the F4E 2022 Terminator. This single upgrade made the plane 750 kilograms lighter, allowed it to have more modern weaponry and gave it better avionics. Israel modified this plane on the pattern of their Kunas 2000, making this Phantom one of the most lethal ones to ever enter service. It's also the most modern variant that's ever been on the market. I think Britain was very confused when they saw the Terminator being launched since Turkey actually wanted to buy Tornados from them in 1980 but that contract never came into being. So currently today the F4 is still in use with the Turkish Air Force with one other aircraft being the F16C. Now you might think about the one Turkish Falcon that flew very close to a boat or the one that almost landed on the passengers at an air show in England. A anyway, the Turks love the F-16 quite a lot. They actually got a license to build the F-16 by America. The only other countries to receive those were Belgium, the Netherlands, well, Japan if you count the Mitsubishi F-2 and some other country, I forgot. But still, the F-16 is built by Turkish Aerospace Industries. And a fun fact about that, every single plane that they built, they have to fly the plane to American soil so it can be handed over to the Turkish Air Force. 
Now, a long overseas flight would be quite insufficient. So what they did is basically they fly to the closest US Army base, make a touch and go. This fulfills their contract and they basically get the F-16. Currently, Turkey is the third largest operator of the F-16 and in NATO, they have the second largest fleet ever. But it could have been very different because after the US embargo was finally lifted, they were given two choices to improve the Air Force. First, they wanted to build modernized F-5Es, but that was the idea was scrapped later on. But America gave them two choices. Either they built licensed F-16s or licensed F-18s. A couple of years later, the F-16 was officially selected and Turkey began building the first F-16s. Now, this one is the F-16C Block 40 variant. And unlike the F-16 I showed off in Thailand, this one has a larger fin at the back because this is a C variant, unlike the A variant that was in Thailand. Now, currently, they still operate the F-16 and they will still try and operate it for a very, very long time, unlike, well, maybe the, the Khan gets its position, but very still long to go. Now, it wouldn't be a video of mine without me actually showing an F-5. And I'm back with one. This one is an F-5A Freedom Fighter. Of course, the Turkish Air Force operated them as well, but it wasn't always like that. Back then, they received a couple of F-5s from Libya, from the US, well, basically just spare retired aircraft that they have. They still have a very large stockpile of spare parts that were donated by Libya. And a lot of NATO operators or operators of the F-5 in general still turn to Turkey to get their hands on the spare parts. Now, the F-5 served as a critical role in intercepting Soviet threats and threats, well, all around the border in, well, joint service with like the Starfighter or the Phantom itself. It's already retired now, but they received a couple of F-5s, not only by Lockheed, but also by Canadair. This one is one from Lockheed, an F-5A, and they also have one made by Canadair. Canadair is, well, the Canadian aviation industry, and I'm going to show you that right now. Now, behind me is the NF-5A that I just mentioned. NF-5A because it was made by Canadair from Canada. This one actually belonged to the Turkish Stars National Aerobatic Team, and this team has the world record for the largest crowd that has seen them performing. That was in Azerbaijan, in Baku, on their air show. Now, the only main difference between the NF-5 and the F-5 is that they have a couple of different avionics, but overall, they're basically the same plane. This particular aircraft is part of a large batch that was donated by the Netherlands to the Turkish Air Force a couple of years ago. And then it served in the national aerobatics team, the Turkish Stars, where they still perform with a, a lot of other planes, mainly the C-160 Trans-L. Let's go to that. Behind me is not a C-130, it's actually its smaller brother, the C-160 Transall. The only difference is that it has two engines instead of four. Now, Transall actually comes from the name Transporte Allianz, which was a transport alliance between France and Germany back when it was developed. Now, Germany used the C-160D quite often before it was replaced by the A400M Atlas and the C-130J Super Hercules. And after that, they donated their C-160Ds, which then Steve for Deutschland, to Turkey, making them C-160Ts. Currently, Turkey is the only military operator worldwide that uses the C-160. They only have two of them in service, and the service is not going to last long, unfortunately, since they already have the A400M. But one C-160 is actually part of the Turkish Stars team, and they still fly air shows with this plane all over the world. The F-104 has got to be the T-34 of aviation. Every museum in the world has at least one of them on display. And this museum is no different. Well, due to the Lockheed bribery scandals, a lot of air forces around the world operated the F-104 Starfighter just like the Turkish Air Force did. In, nine, in the 1960s, around that time, Turkey wanted a new fighter jet for intercepting Soviet threats on the border, so they chose the Starfighter. They received a couple of F-104Gs from Lockheed and operated them. They proved quite useful, so they actually liked them a lot. And seeking to expand their fleet, they eventually signed a contract with the more successful Air Italia F-104S. So they received around 20 of those. Later, as newer and modern, more modern jets came on the market, a lot of air forces dumped their already retired F-104s to the Turkish inventory and they received like 400 starfighters from various sources at that time. Germany finally, finally got rid of their Widowmaker curse as they donated around 140 F-104Gs to Turkey and they started operating them and they retired them somewhere in 1999, but it shaped the way the Turkish Air Force operates with Mark II abilities. Now, of course, I can't cover all of the aircraft used by Turkey, so I just selected the most important ones. But to finish this video, I recorded this short walk around the outside area, featuring the Turkish Cold War fighter family and more. Enjoy!